two legs to run on, you know. And so the whole idea is about two legs, okay? And, uh, <laughs> and today I'm going to start talking about the, the, the main two legs, and then we, we will talk about more of, of those legs, you know. Can you all see legs just by themselves? Like, okay, that's kind of weird, right? <laughs> well, hopefully you'll remember that. But God gave us two legs to run on, okay? And many of God's children are hopping around on one leg. How much faster can you go with two, right? Twice as fast, right? And I, and I believe, and I, and I felt this when the Lord gave me this revelation, you know, I, I feel like, um, you know, a lot of times we ask like, oh my gosh, I'm doing everything I know how to do. You know, I'm, I'm giving it my best and, uh, and here you are, and your best is just on one leg, you know? So, so what I'm not talking about uh, in this year is balance. I tend to not like that word, you know, balance, because it's like, oh, yeah, you just need balance. And people take that in very weird directions. So I'm not really talking about balance because you don't need 50% of this leg and 50% of this leg. You need 100% of both, right? So in a way, it's a teaching about wholeness, you know, about being complete, whole, without missing anything, right? And so God gave us two legs to run on, right? He wants us to prosper. Um, And and we're going to start seeing a lot of these parallels. The Lord will reveal some to you. My goal is that in this series, you will be, you will become aware of, of things in your life, in your life where you're just like hopping around on one leg or limping really short on one and really not using both legs that God has given us about that. And a lot of it is going to seem to you like the two extremes, right? A lot of times people just go and they fall into one rut and then you can't get them out of there and it's impossible for them to see the other side of it, right? And so, again, it's not balance. It's like he gave us all of it. He gave us, he gave us wholeness. He gave us a, a full two legs to walk on and to advance, right? To prosper, you know, which next week we're going to talk about that. But uh, financial prosperity, right? There's two legs for that. And a lot of times people get stuck on just one and they don't see the full thing. So we'll be talking about a lot of those things, how it all applies to relationships. But um, if, you, um, if you read it in John 4, 23, it says, the true worshipers will worship me in spirit and in truth. But just to give you an example, you know, the spirit and in truth worship looks different, right? Most of what we do here in the morning is in spirit, right? We are connecting with God in our spirit. We're like putting all our attention on him. We're, we're singing with our whole being. We're, we're singing at, you know, a tub of our lungs. We're just like all engaged there, right? Hopefully everybody gets to that place, right? And we're engaged with him completely. But when we walk out of here and the way we live our life and our lifestyle, it's also worship and that's worship in truth. Okay? So in other words, if we didn't worship in spirit and in truth, we'd be kind of hypocrites. We'd be all worshiping here and then out there, I'm just verbally abusive to my wife, right? Well, how, do, you know, how does that add up? It doesn't. It's not meant to be that way, right? So it's an example of, of the things that we're going to study, okay? But today, we're talking about the two legs of power and wisdom, okay? Say with me, power and wisdom. All right. So power and wisdom are necessary to advance the kingdom of God, but they're also necessary to prosper in your life, to advance in your life. And it's going to show up in many different ways, okay? Um, It's not one or the other, it's both. You can't just be a person of power and anointed and just rely your whole life on just power. You need wisdom also, okay? We need both because power has a purpose and wisdom has a different purpose. So if you don't learn to walk on both of those legs, you're going to produce kind of an incomplete life around you. I mean, we see that in a a lot of uh, revivalists, right? And when we study their lives, amazing men of God, tremendous signs and wonders, right? But some of them fail to see some of the wisdom side that they were missing on it. And it caused pain around them. And it caused pain in their families and their marriages and in certain areas. Because... They rely just all on power and nothing on wisdom or very little on wisdom, right? And then that became the downfall. Are you with me? Okay, so it's not 50-50. We need 
both legs 100%, okay? It's not just prayer. It's also godly wisdom. You know, this, this has been kind of a theme in my life. Uh, I have seen a lot of extremes, okay? I've been in, in the Pentecostal church, okay? And, and first of all, I want to say I'm not knocking on anybody, okay? I'm just saying I've been in, in the very, very just spiritual, spiritual movements, okay, where there's no word whatsoever. I've been in the other ones where it's all just word, just word. They're just word. Like there's nothing, nothing else. It's just the word, okay? I've been in the ones that is all prophetic. It's just prophetic. And, and I won't move from this chair until the Lord tells me that it's time. Even if I want to go to the bathroom, Lord, is it time? I can't hear you. There must be a purpose for me just staying here. What do you want to teach me? You know, I'm holding it, God, but tell me. You know, and it's like, okay, I love, like there's so much power about what everyone holds, but it's not supposed to be one or the other. Like what if we had, you know, all the prophetic and all the power and all the teaching and all of this and all of that, like in the church body, right? Like under one roof and we all were growing Equally, with two legs walking, we would probably take more ground and more territory, right? Faster. We would probably grow faster. We would probably grow more healthy, right? You know, I prayed, with, uh, I prayed for a lot of people that had one uh, leg shorter than the other one. And I've seen those legs just grow right in front of my eyes, like one, two, three inches sometimes. Um, and you know what uh, a lot of those people were, were dealing with for a long time in their life because they had a shorter leg than the other? Uh, lower back pain a tremendous chronic back pain. But the back pain wasn't the issue, that was the symptom. And when the leg grows out and it's even, the pain just goes away. And a lot of people live with this spiritual back pain, right? And they're just praying for the back instead of praying for the leg. Are you with me? So I want God to show us in our life what areas we need to grow out. Right? What areas we need to add? What legs are we missing or what legs are way shorter in our life? Right? Not to bring balance, to bring wholeness. Are you with me? Okay. So we're talking about power and wisdom today. Okay. Um, when we first got married... My wife just sunk in the chair. But I'm, I'm not throwing her under the bus because she's here. I do that on Wednesday nights when she's not here. No, I'm, just I'm just joking, babe. Throwing me under the bus. So when we first got married, um, I think I, I've said this before, you know, I, I, I'm uh, very immature, very, very immature. And I want to give you a little bit of context. I came um, from a few years of traveling with an evangelist ministry, with evangelistic ministry, and we did miracle crusades all, all over the place. We did miracle crusades in, in stadiums and in, in, in gymnasiums and on the streets and in parks. And, and I traveled for a long time, and, and it was, we were always <laughs> living by faith. <laughs> I laughed because Maria's sitting here, and her, her husband traveled with me, and he would be laughing too, you know. But uh, we were always living by faith. Now, if you don't know what that means, it most likely means you don't have a job. <laughs> okay? <laughs> most of the time, that's what it means, okay? <laughs> it's not what it's supposed to mean, according to the Bible, but that's, you know, when somebody's like, oh, I just live by faith. All right, so you're unemployed. <laughs> okay. So, so we, we live by faith, right? And we had support, right? We had uh, missionary support that was coming in and was coming to the ministry, but we were always n not only living for the miracles and in the miracles of the crusade and the, and the healings, which we saw tremendous healings, but it was also, we needed miracles to get to the next town. We needed a miracle to get out of Central America. We needed a miracle for everything. We needed a miracle, okay? All the time we, and it was, let me tell you, it's a, it's a very exciting life. It's a very, ooh, adrenaline rushing, like, oh my gosh, ooh, is it going to happen or not, right? Which at that point, I'm single, I'm uh, 19, 18, 19 years old, you know, and uh, it doesn't really matter, you know, it's, it's all good, you know, nobody else is being affected by this, so, um, and my other teammates are, you know, it's the same, we're all just single men living for Jesus, you know, and, 
And we're seeing amazing things, but it's all like, it's all about the next miracle. It's all about the next miracle, the next provision. Praise God, money came in. We could put gas in the tank, move on to the next city. Like it was that kind of lifestyle. So when I come back home and a year later I get married, right? I, I've been, I'm used to living by faith and living from miracle to miracle to miracle, right? And everything is just like, ooh, but guess what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of you know what I'm talking about, right? Already. <laughs> My wife doesn't want to live like that, <laughs> right? And, and we love miracles, okay? And this is what the Lord showed me years ago. It's like, I love the miraculous, but I don't want to have to be the one needing it, okay? I don't want to be the one that needs the miracle at every turn <laughs> because it's not supposed to be that way. Let me tell you, it's not supposed to be that way. The great displays of power that we see in the Old Testament and the New Testament was to pull people out of really, really bad situations. Okay? Like, they were slaves for 400 years and they were oppressed and abused. It was necessary to have a great display of power to deliver them and show all the nations that God was with them, okay? A woman with an issue of blood for 12 years, she needed a miracle to come out of that situation. Every miracle, right? Everything that Jesus did, it was a display of power and love and the love of God, which is why we need, absolutely need, to carry the power of God in our lives and be ready for everyone and anyone who needs the power of God in our lives because God wants to show them his goodness and his love through a display of great power. Are you with me? Okay? But I don't want to be the one needing a miracle all the time. Now, that does not take away from me living a supernatural life. I live a supernatural life. I don't live like everybody else. But that supernatural life is sourced out of the principles of the kingdom of heaven. Okay? So because my citizenship is in the kingdom of heaven... My life is supernatural, but it doesn't mean that I need a miracle every day. There are seasons. Absolutely, there's things that happen. And God will come and he will display his power in our lives. Absolutely, yes. So the leg that I had to learn how to develop and to, and to see was the one I didn't have, which was wisdom. <laughs> right? And when I got married, I found that out really quickly. I'm like, what, what do you mean? Like, don't you have faith? Ooh. <laughs> That's a dangerous place to go. It's a religious thing to say, right? Don't you have faith? Yeah, of course I have faith. So living by wisdom is not living in fear. Now, you have to know which one it is in your life because you could say, see, that's why we can't judge anybody's motives. You could say, hey, I like to have some savings. Oh, don't you have faith that God is our provider? There's something really wrong behind that. Because that, it could be that there's fear, but it also could be that, no, I just like abundance. I just like, to be able to abound for every good work and anyone who needs something, be able to have something to give them. You know? <laughs> I, I would like to build wealth to pass on to my children's children. Right? <laughs> but we're so quick to judge sometimes. So I, here I am, you know, I'm like, I'm like miracle man and, and she, she's just like, you know, what's going on? You know, I just, there's nothing wrong with want to have this or, 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 you know, not be in debt or not, you know, just have extra. And uh, so because I didn't have wisdom, I made bad choices too, you know. And then, uh, you know, those choices led to uh, learning by pain, painful situation, you know, in, in finance. But I want to tell you something. I, I've learned quickly and I re now I learn by wisdom. You know, I don't like to learn by pain. So I learned by wisdom, and I learned by the wisdom in the word and, and by the pain that others have gone through. You know, the mistakes that others made. And that's when you position yourself as a son and a daughter, and you learn, you know, and you receive from someone else who's gone through there, and you go, okay, I don't have to try that. Thank you, right? Um, 
Okay, so in the finances, in the kids, in, it, this is going to show up in, in so many areas of your life. And, um, you know, finances is one, you know. We don't want to have to be the ones living by miracle. We want to be the one God uses for the miracle, right? You want to be the one that God can speak to, be like, hey, go and give that person $1,000, and then that person learns that God is a good provider, that he will take care of them, right? That that was a miracle. But now they need to grow that other leg too. Right? Because see, the Israelites lived from miracle to miracle. Every day in the desert, they got bread from heaven. Okay? They got water from the rock. It was a miraculous walk in the desert. But when they walked into the promised land, it stopped. You know why? Because God said now, Grow another leg. Learn to live by wisdom, by my principles. Now, okay, I'm with you, but now I need you to grow up. And it's part of maturity and it's part of growing. That's why, okay, see, that's why a lot of times we see miracles happen so easy for unbelievers or new believers. But then comes to a point where you need to learn to exercise your own faith and grow in that and learn to hear the, the voice of God. Okay. Power demonstrates, but wisdom reigns. Wisdom helps us reign. Okay. God gave us all power, dominion, authority. He gave us the earth. He said, here you go. Subdue it. Right? Rule it. Reign over it. He gave it to us. I, I want to um, I want to give you a couple of examples before. We go into, well, let me read this. Uh, Jeremiah 10, 12 says, God made the world by his power and established it by his wisdom. Okay? He made the world by power and he established it by wisdom. Uh, we're going to read now Luke two fifty two. Okay? And it says that Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and all people. So Jesus grew in wisdom. Okay. See, power, power comes with the Holy Spirit. The gifts come with the Holy Spirit. Wisdom also comes through the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to read 1 Corinthians 2, 4 through 13. So if you want to look this up or come, I'm going to read from verse 4 to verse 14 in 1 Corinthians 2. It says this. And my message and my preaching were very plain. Rather than using clever and persuasive speeches, which let me remind you, he totally could. Paul was a Pharisee of Pharisees. He, he had the most eloquent speeches and words and, and, and the law, and he knew everything. He could sound extremely, extremely smart, okay? And wow everyone with that. But he's saying, rather than using... Uh, clever and persuasive speeches, I relied only on the power of the Holy Spirit. I did this so you would trust not in human wisdom, but in the power of God. So there is a difference between human wisdom and God's wisdom, okay? And he said, I did this so you would trust in the power of God. Yet when I am among mature believers, I do speak with words of wisdom, but not the kind of wisdom that belongs to this world or to the rulers of this world who are soon forgotten. No, the wisdom we speak of is the mystery of God. Say with me, mystery. His plan that was previously hidden. Say with me, hidden. See, there's mysteries and there's hidden things of God that he has. But I want to tell you something right away. He doesn't hide things from us. He hides things for us. Okay, And there is a huge difference. Because you don't want to think that God is hiding things from you. He's hiding them for you. You know why? Because it's about a relationship and it's an invitation to come seek him more and find out the deeper things. It's not like a buffet, like in the Chinese buffet where it's like, it's all right there laid out for you. That's not God. He's that available for everyone, but he has this back room. Do you, do you, want, to come? Do you want to come with me? You want to come? Let's spend some time. I got some secrets for those that spend more time with me, for those that are looking for my face and not just my hand, 
And I, I have stuff for you back here. Do you want to come, right? Let me show you, right? And that's this room where it's full of mysteries and secrets. And that's the wisdom of God, okay? It says, mm-hmm. even though he made it for our ultimate glory before the world began. But the rulers of this world have not understood it. If they had, they would not have crucified our glorious Lord. This is what the scriptures mean when they say, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love Him. For those who love Him, right? For those who are seeking Him. So you see, this is like, nobody's seen this, nobody has heard this. Those are the mysteries, those are the secrets. How many of you uh, read the, uh, the, the book of the seven decisions last year? Any of you? Yeah. Okay, so some of you, yeah. Okay, so there's, there's a, the, in the last chapter right there, it describes a room, which is very much like what I'm thinking. And it's this huge room full of, uh, it's like a huge warehouse, and it's full of documents and, and, and books and books. And, and the angel tells him, it's like, this is all the stuff that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no, nobody knows about. These are the secret things of God. And they're handed out, and they're given out to those that seek him, to those that seek God's wisdom. Right? And now, a lot of the things I was talking in the book, which I, I think is very, <laughs> it's very accurate. You know, it's talking about different formulas. It's talking about for the cure for cancer. And you're like, wait a minute. Power cures cancer. Yes, it does. But, I mean, the medical field is coming out with all kinds of things all the time. Don't you think God knows exactly what those things are? Don't you think God has the formula for that? Don't you think God has a formula to eradicate smog from a city? (laughs) I mean, these are the hidden things of God that unless you seek Him and seek His wisdom, you won't know them. Okay. I have more to say about that, but let's continue reading. Um... For his spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. And we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit. So we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. When we tell you these things, we do not use words that come from human wisdom. Instead, we speak words given to us by the Spirit, using the Spirit's words to explain spiritual truths. And then in 1 Corinthians 1.24, it says, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. He's both the power and the wisdom. Are you with me? Sometimes you hear people praying their whole life for something, praying for the neighbor or praying for their spouse or praying for, you know, but they never do anything. And I wonder if they're really strong in one leg and really skinny on the other one. I wonder, you know, because the Bible talks about faith in action. Some people just pray, 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 fast and pray, fast and pray, and they never see anything or they never see much. They see little. What if they started walking on both legs in wisdom and said, God, What should I do? Should I cook a meal for my neighbor? Maybe, you know, that'll open up their heart. You know, maybe like, should I bring a gift to them? Should I offer prayer? Should I make any kind of interaction? Maybe. God, I'm praying for my health, right? That's great. Pray for your health. But how about you stop drinking soda? I'm just going to look here at my notes. <laughs> Wisdom. <sighs> power. Power brings the catalyst. It's the encounter. It's the, the pow. <laughs> the radical demonstration of God's love and power. And power isn't more faith than wisdom. In other words, just because we operate or you operate in power more, it doesn't mean that the person... Or, or, the, or the wisdom side has less power or less faith. No, it's still supernatural because remember, we just read clearly, it's not human wisdom we're talking about, it's God's wisdom. Okay, let me tell you what God wis- God's wisdom does. God's wisdom 
will give you the exact or the new strategy that nobody's ever tried out to build a business. God will give you the secret recipe to build and to make a new food that everyone's going to love, right? <laughs> like kale. <laughs> I mean, somebody said kale and they were just, everything's about kale, right? And then kale's over and now it was wheatgrass and then, it, you know, it's all about what's next, babe? I was going to say that one. <laughs> right? Isn't it? But, but see, God has these things, you know? Like, uh, I, lo I love, uh, if you guys know Todd and Chloe, God gave me an idea that, you know, to start a lemonade stand. And now his lemonade stand is a franchise all over the world. I mean, lemonade? Seriously? Right, God gave him the recipes, the menu, how to, you know, what to call them, and all of a sudden, everybody wants it. You know why? Because it was a God idea that was birthed in the secret place with God. It's like lemonade. Wow, that's amazing, right? What do you want to make, you know? Well, God has, God has something for you. Because, see, you're called to s such greatness. And when you know you're called to such greatness, you know that what desires are in your heart they're not just meant to be average. They're supposed to be beyond great, right? This is not just lemonade. It's great lemonade. And for some reason, everybody wants it. I mean, they're in Hong Kong and Taiwan. I don't know how many other places in the world, right? And you think, well, I could do that. Well, God can. He can give you an idea. See, those secrets, those mysteries, those things, that's the wisdom of God. See, that's the, that's the wisdom of God. He, he didn't pray and pray and pray until somebody just like, boom, powerfully appeared. Like, it, this stuff happened in the time with God, in the secret place, the mysteries. That's the wisdom of God. He tells you how to do things. Do you have questions? Ask him. Something's not working right in your life, in your business, in your job, and whatever. Ask him. He's got the answer. He's got the right formula. He's got exactly what you need. You with me? So, again, I'm not knocking down power. We need power. The world needs power. Let me tell you, that's how the world is going to come to know him. By the power, right? When you have a word of knowledge for someone, and then you give it to them, and they break down in tears because they know only God could have known that. You know how special and loved they feel? Right? So we need the power of God. And we need the wisdom of God. And we need to walk in those things 100% so we can advance the kingdom. We can advance our lives. You can pray for your kids. But if you don't learn how to discipline them, you can pray for your kids. But if you don't learn how to discipline them, right? Are you, gro are you growing there? You need wisdom. That's great that you pray for them. Awesome. But do you, maybe you need some new tools. Let me tell you something about Proverbs. Proverbs was written for royalty. Proverbs was written for royalty. It was taught to Solomon. To learn how to rule. To learn how to reign. So through wisdom, we will reign as royalty. Proverbs 1, uh, verse 1 through 6. I'm going to read it out of the Passion Translation. I really encourage you um, to read Proverbs. If you have not read the book of Proverbs... Grab a Passion Translation, which is also in the Bible app, and read one chapter a day. This book is wisdom in a person, okay? And it not only gives you wisdom and good advice, no, it's godly wisdom, okay? It is also, um, like I say, it also teaches you how to be a royal, how to walk in your identity as, as, as a as a prince or a princess, okay? Um, 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this for you first. Verse 1 through 6. It says, Here are the, the kingdom revelations, words to live by, and words of wisdom given to empower you to reign in life. It's not just good advice. It's so that you know how to reign in life. Okay? Written as Proverbs by Israel's King Solomon, David's son. Within these sayings will be found the revelation of wisdom and the impartation of spiritual understanding. Let me tell you something. Wisdom comes with understanding. Those two are not apart. Okay? Wisdom and understanding. Use them as keys to unlock the treasures of true knowledge. Those who cling to these words will receive discipline to demonstrate wisdom in every relationship and to choose what is right and just and fair. These proverbs will give you great skill to teach the immature and make them wise, to give youth the understanding of their design and destiny. For the wise, these proverbs will make you even wiser. And for those with discernment, you will be able to acquire brilliant strategies for leadership. I mean, this is said a whole lot better than I just did, right? But it's saying the same. It says, uh, verse 6, These kingdom revelations will break open your understanding to unveil the deeper meaning of parables, poetic riddle, riddles, and epigrams and to unravel the words and enigmas of the wise. Any good thing that the world has and that is prospering, every good idea, every good principle that you see working in the world is found in the Bible. Nobody made it up. It came out of here. Like, you, you hear all these leadership, there's just so many leadership podcasts, there's so many leadership books out there, right? Let me tell you, the ones that have good stuff and the good things that are in them, the things that actually work, all of those things, they're right here. They were here first. <laughs> you could probably rewrite Proverbs in your own words and call it the number one leadership book in the world and become a millionaire. Right? Because every good thing, every good word that has power, every good strategy, everything, it, this is God's wisdom. So we need God's wisdom. And that wisdom is supernatural wisdom. I mean, do you, do you hear what I'm saying? Like poetic riddles, epigrams, parables, enigmas of the wise. Like how to fly an airplane. You know, that formula was once in heaven hidden in God's mysteries. Whoever invented the cell phone, you know where that wisdom came from? From heaven, from God. <laughs> yeah, not from, like, from the devil. That's from the devil. <laughs> See, God created these things for good. Okay. So, I want to give you a couple more examples. Um, Garden of Eden. In the Garden of Eden, there was no great display of power happening. But wisdom was, the wisdom of God was actively working, at, right? Naming the animals and, you know, the plants and I don't know, whatever else this guy did in there, you know. But it was, it was not like, he wasn't praying for miracles. He didn't need a miracle. And then he got wisdom, and she was beautiful. <laughs> right? It was, he was living by wisdom, by the wisdom of God. What to, what to name those things and not, like I said, you know, agriculture stuff, or I don't even know how, what, what else happened there, but it wasn't a big display of power. When the big display of power started happening? When they started getting into trouble. Noah's Ark. Okay, so how do you think this guy built it? He didn't pray for it. He didn't lay hands on the wood. He didn't pray, and then these animals came and put it together. How do you think he built it? God's wisdom, right? He told him exactly how to do it. There was no water around there. 
Like, this came out of nowhere. There was no YouTube. There was no Google. There was no build an ark for dummies. There was none of that stuff. It was God's wisdom, entirely God's wisdom. I mean, how long it took the guy, I don't know. They, you know, they, say, they throw a lot of numbers out there. I think some say even 100 or whatever, you know, but I, I don't know. But the point is, like, he had to be in close connection with God, you know, and he was operating by the wisdom of God. And that's how he saved, you know, humanity there. Um, Daniel chapter 1, verse 20. Uh, actually, uh, this is our last scripture we're going to read today. And I want to read a few more verses. Um, so let's go to Daniel chapter 1. And um, so this is happening during the exile, okay? And in chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 8, says, Daniel was determined not to defile himself by eating the food and wine given to them by the king. Okay, so what was happening here is they, they were chosen. Daniel, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were chosen from the tribe of Judah. Okay, and, and they were taken to the king's palace, and they were going to be counselors. They were going to, you know, work for the king. So they were treating him really, really well. They were going to, you know, feed them really well, make him... Uh, you know, bring them up to par, according to them, so that they were fit to serve the king, okay? And they were going to feed them food that was not the kind of food that God told them to eat. In other words, it was unclean food, okay? And Daniel says right here in verse 8, he was determined not to defile himself by eating the food and the wine given to them by the king. So, He's like, nope, we, we can't do that. I know that you have good intentions. I know you want to treat us really good. I know that. But that, God told us not to do that, okay? I want you to think of this as the world's wisdom, okay? As what the world tells you you're supposed to do and look like, okay? That, and, and they chose not to defile themselves and eat that food, you know? So in other words, they chose to not conform to the world, Romans 12, they chose not to conform to the world, but instead stay with God's principles. And so he cuts this deal, and he asked the chief of staff for permission not to eat these unacceptable foods. Now said, now God had given the chief of staff both respect and affection for Daniel, but he responded, I am afraid of my lord the king, who has ordered that you eat this food and wine. If you become pale and thin uh, compared to the other, young, uh, the other youth your age, I'm afraid the king will have me beheaded. Daniel spoke with the attendant who had been appointed by the chief of staff to look after Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, and said, please test us for 10 days on a diet of vegetables and water. And Daniel, Daniel said, at the end of the 10 days, see how we look compared to the other young men who are eating the king's food. Then make your decision in light of what you see. The attendant agreed to Daniel's suggestion and tested them for 10 days. Are you following what's happening here? He's like, all right, let's do a test, okay? Let's do it our way for 10 days, and then see how we look afterwards, okay? In other words, we're going to test the ways of God against the ways of the world. It's at the end of the 10 days, Daniel and his three friends looked healthier and better nourished than the young men who had been eating the food assigned by the king. So after that, the attendant fed them only vegetables instead of the food and wine provided for the others. God gave these four young men an unusual aptitude for understanding every aspect of literature and wisdom. And God gave Daniel the special ability to interpret the meaning of visions and dreams. When the training period ordered by the king was complete, the chief of staff brought all the young men to King Nebuchadnezzar. The king talked with them, and no one impressed him as much as Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So they entered the royal service. And whenever the king, check this out, whenever the king consulted them in any matter requiring wisdom and balanced judgment, he found them 10 times more capable than any of the magicians and enchanters in the entire kingdom. 10 times more. We need the ways of God and the wisdom of God to rule and reign in this world. The power of God, we need it to display his love, to display his affection, to display his power, to display how much he loves people. We need the power of God in our lives. But it's the wisdom of God that will give us a place at the king's table. It's the wisdom of God 
that will allow us to influence the entertainment industry, the government. It is the wisdom of God that will put a, a solution to the education issue, to the medical issue, to the, eco- to the economy. It's the wisdom of God in, the, in his children that will actually affect governments and will affect uh, you know, the, the medical industry, that will affect the, the technology industry. It is the wisdom of God. Let me tell you, that's what we need. We need to grow that leg. If you're pretty strong on the power, but you're not so strong in the wisdom, you need to ask God and you need to get with him for those mysteries because for your life, there's specific things that he wants to give you that he has saved for just you. And that's how you're going to affect the companies that you work for. The, you know, that's how you're going to change and actually affect around you and have influence for those places. We need his wisdom. So, I don't know which leg you have shorter or which leg you're missing. Maybe like, well, I'm missing both legs. <laughs> I'm actually really short on both of those. But we need those too. We can't just say, oh, you know what? No, I just, it, it's just want, it's just power. That's all. Just power, 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 you know. Or no, just wisdom, just wisdom. Like God wants to make us whole, a whole person. What are you going to do? Which one are you missing?